Okay, good morning. We are back at the frozen freezer. Um, what we're gonna do is take all this cork tape off. After talking to the owner, he said, uh, seems like once a year this happens, but we are 100% testing continuity across it. And we got nothing and obviously it's not even consistently. So maybe it had been sporadically working for him and the sporadic days are, are done. So we've got the power off. I uh, got the light in here. I got help with me today. We're gonna pull this cork tape, which another technician who I follow, who most of you follow as well, said cork tape is from the devil for sure. So we're gonna get this off. I've got new actual insulation, uh, new heater wire. I'm hoping when we pull this off, we can find the exact spot to show the owner, but away we go. Can confirm. Cork tape is of the devil. Never use this stuff, it's terrible. So, all right, we're gonna get this done. I'm gonna check and make sure none of this is cracked. And what we ought to be able to do is, I'm gonna unhook the fans, cause I don't want them running. Hook up the heater line and actually wrap it and start feeding it through while we're wrapping it. <coughs> Let it heat. Once we clear this, there is a drain pan heater that when we put it in a defrost, the heaters should melt this ice for us as long as we have a way to move it out. So, we'll see. All right, step, I don't know, it's basically step one <laughs> after we got everything off. So we've got the heater coil brought in, uh, this time grounded, previously it was not connected to the ground. I'm gonna go upstairs and put this in a defrost and then I'm gonna power it on. So once I power it on, this will start heating up and the heaters inside will start doing their thing. So we should be able to, uh, well, yeah, never mind. See, my brain goes squirrel. All right, so we've got the tape installed, wired in. Um, the tape actually isn't right here, it's on this one, let's see. The tape isn't powered during a defrost. It's only powered during cooling circuit. So we unhooked the fans so they're not running. Put it in a cooling circuit so that I can run this. Um, we went to pull amps and it was like 0.14. It's not much, but you can definitely feel it. My FLIR is too cold. It doesn't want to boot up in here. I've had it sitting in here, so boo. But we're going to insulate this and then let this run for a little while, clear this drain line. Once we start seeing water outside, then we'll kick it into a defrost, we'll know this is clear. So here we go. Oh, also, insulation, right? I mean, this is the difference between buying crap insulation from Home Depot or Lowe's and going to the parts house and getting insulation. It's three quarter inches thick. It's designed for three quarter inch pipe. Um, I could have gone one inch, but this has a really nice big overlap and self-sealing. So this will be much nicer and actually insulate instead of the garbage that people do. Or cork tape, boo. That's nice. So I'm real tight to the back, real tight to the top. And then I uh, second it with electrical tape just in case that factory seal tape doesn't hold. But that's insulated. All right, we have insulated up top and we got water dripping out of this outside. So I know the drain line can produce, uh, can deliver the water. So what I'm gonna do now, and I already confirmed this once and I'm whipping you all over the place here. Let's look at the heaters. All right. We got two amps on that heater. Let's take a look. We should have three heaters. Yep, we do. We got a heater here, two in the coil and one in the pan. This is not made for, that's the one I already checked, 1.77. And then the third one is here. Uh, tell you what, I got 0.6 on that one. I know the coil heaters are working. Well, one, you can 
feel the heat coming off of them. You can hear it sizzling. And the coil isn't froze up. The coil would be frozen up. Well, now it's just a matter of, are we heating this tray enough? I was hoping to do this mechanically and not have to break this out and move the ice out of here manually. And we'll see what happens. All right, we've got good water flow outside happening, but you can see how much ice is in this. I mean, I broke off what I could and now I'm running the heaters. We're running warm water down the trays and it's running to the outside, clearing out, but it's gonna take a long time like this. So we're gonna pull off this cover and fan card and get the sprayer. And we're gonna start working the water from the inside since we know it's draining. Try and speed up the process. Yeah, so fan off. Slowly pouring hot water in. You can see the level raises on the side. You gotta watch we don't overflow it. You can hear the glug glug. Down it goes. Slow and steady. So we brought a big bucket in and then as we were able to, we just popped that off, threw it in the bucket. So I think I'm gonna put this blade on and take this one off, do the same in there. So which is why you can't just let the heater do the work. Is look, it's just gonna cut a hole around it. So this is our delicate methods where there's no hose available to reach to this point. And actually, I don't want to bring a hose in anyway. This is actually what I've been doing. There she goes. And now we get to the point we can just pry that up. All right, so we've got our ice melted behind the fans. I took my big light out, sorry. So we're just dealing with this. Uh, my helper's headed to the roof to kill the defrost. We've reconnected the fans. So we're gonna get our screws in there. We're just waiting to see that it kicks on. And then we should be done with all of the ice nonsense in here. His footsteps above us. Ta da! The fan cycle is unhooked. Yeah. Heater's turned off. Ten degrees. <laughs> this is back here above where right above where the heaters are. It's only 99 degrees in your freezer, don't worry about it. Alright, there you go. She's pulled down. She's already 25. So freezer revived.